What initiatives has Singapore taken to amplify the voices and advance the interests of small countries in the world? Singapore has taken two initiatives. First, we founded the Forum of Small States. Any country with a population below 10 million is eligible to join. And it's become a very important um, trade union of small countries. You know, we amplify a collective voice. We support each other in uh, elections to UN bodies. And, um, and it's become an important forum. The other initiative is to form the Global Governance Group, the three, so-called 3G. This is to balance the G20. When G20 became an important organisation, we were afraid that this would marginalise all the other countries that were not in G20. So we decided to bring together a group of um, small and medium-sized economies and to work together, not against G20, but to complement them. Economic diplomacy is really what Denmark is focusing on right now. And what it is, uh, it is a, an effort spearheaded by the Minister of Foreign Affairs involving our line ministries according to relevant topic, uh, focusing on sectors and taking point of departure in Danish strongholds. What would that be? That could be, again, the energy agenda, it could be water, it could be livability, it could be health, healthy living, design, uh, issues that we are known for worldwide and which are important to us. And uh, as we go abroad, we engage in dialogues with, uh, with countries, with partners in countries, with governments on issues uh, that have their interest and we form uh, platforms uh, for cooperation and really also engaging with uh, private sector. The Timor-Leste played an important and significant role in changing the way of thinking of uh, the international organizations, even like uh, UN, World Bank, IMF, we go and speak at the international for uh, to raise the questions of uh, difficulties in the small countries. For many years now, Maldives has taken leadership in advocating um, for uh, measures against climate change. Maldives took the initiative to form the Association of Small Island States (AOSIS). It's a uh, like-minded uh, body of uh, uh, small island countries and small states uh, who are threatened uh, by uh, climate change and have then continued to play a very important role in um, advocating for small islands, uh, particularly in the context of the climate negotiations in the UNFCC. So is it an advantage or a disadvantage to be a small state in this contemporary world? I think the conventional wisdom is that it is a disadvantage to be a small state. But the world that we live in today is, an, is a different world from the world of the last century or the 19th century. It's a world driven by open economies, free trade, um, mobility of human talent. So small countries that believe in free trade, welcome investment, welcome human talent that are te technologically advanced, um, do very well. If you look at um, the most successful countries in the world, many of them are not the big country, but small country. I think it is a question of being conscious of the size that you have and which possibilities that gives you and which are the pitfalls. So you have the possibility of being extremely agile and take very swift uh, decisions and uh, to play on different agendas you have to be extremely focused because you cannot play on all agendas and you have to form alliances because only through alliances can you actually have an impact.